Hello everyone, and welcome to another devlog video. It's Dog Demon again, and today we're going to be going over the future development plans for SCP Secret Laboratory, as well as showcasing our next update for the game. In our previous devlog, we discussed our plans regarding the inventory we work. This resulted in the release of the Parabellum update, featuring the Weapons Overhaul, 173 rework, the new Chaos Insurgency subclasses, and many other game-changing features. Since then, we released two large event updates, one for Christmas and one for Halloween. We also released version 11.1, .1, which included a handful of new features. We're very pleased with the development progress achieved in 2021. We can only hope to get as much of your support this year as you have given us in the past. With all this being said, it's time for us to begin working on our next major project. We're planning to refactor many of the core systems of our game. This will facilitate reworking the remaining SCPs and allow us to introduce features which weren't feasible to develop before. This is a large-scale project and will take quite a bit of time to complete. For this reason, we have decided to release one more update within the Parabellum series, version 11.2, which we will be discussing for the remainder of this devlog. By refactoring the inventory system, it became much easier for us to implement new items. You can see this by the recent additions of the SCP-330 candies, the Ghost Light, SCP-244, and the Particle Disruptor. In relation to the weapon changes, we have decided to include a new consumable item, which will give the user a greater advantage in gunfights, SCP-1853. It's a green liquid stored in vials. It can be found in the SCP pedestals located throughout the facility. Up to two doses can spawn per round. Its primary function is to facilitate human combat while making sustainability more difficult. When applied, it provides a spectrum of effects which primarily speeds up weapon manipulation and reduces the time necessary to equip, reload, and aim down the sights. As a drawback, stamina usage is increased by 50%, making the player an easier target for SCPs. SCP-207 can negate the increased stamina consumption, however, combining the two SCPs is ill-advised, as it results in the poisoning dealing significant damage over time. In conclusion, we believe this item is a good counterbalance to SCP-207, which will make engaging in gunfights far more interesting and rewarding. Back in Christmas of 2021, we introduced a brand new SCP item, SCP-244. It was a deployable ceramic jar that produced a huge radius of ice fog once the lid was removed. This SCP item was a new environmental hazard we had experimented with, and we were pleasantly surprised by the community's positive reactions towards it. However, we soon realized how underwhelming this item performed during gameplay scenarios, as it didn't pose enough of a threat to any human or SCP. Over the past few weeks, we've been looking for ways to improve its mechanics and make it more applicable in gameplay scenarios. As such, we have made the exposure to the fog more severe, featuring new negative effects. The hypothermia effect now deals much more damage and can drain the Hume shield of SCPs. Other changes include longer item pickup times, increase attack cooldowns for certain SCPs, and reduce movement speed and weapon accuracy. We've also added a few other improvements. The fog will spread much faster and it is no longer possible to trigger 096 through it. With these changes, we're looking forward to making SCP-244 a permanent feature of SCP Secret Laboratory. As this update is part of the Parabellum series, it naturally contains a number of improvements to the weapon systems. Let's begin by presenting the shotgun changes. The shotgun has always been a difficult weapon to balance, and it always fascinated us how it performed so poorly despite having one of the best stats in the game. Our original plan was to add a new attachment, a double shot trigger mechanism. When installed, the shotgun could fire both shells with a single trigger pull. This means that damage would be doubled, but so would the ammo usage. The recoil and pumping time would also be increased, which could then result in a more high-risk, high-reward weapon. However, during gameplay testing, we discovered a critical issue with our backtracking system, which was the real cause of the shotgun's poor performance all along. It turns out only the first pellet fired by the shotgun was properly calculated, while the rest of the projectiles didn't take the shooter's network latency into consideration. This resulted in very unpredictable behavior, which rewarded low ping and pure luck rather than the player's aiming skills. We've managed to patch these issues, and the shotgun finally turned out to be as good as it is on paper. It actually ended up being too overpowered at longer ranges, so we had to nerf a few stats, such as the damage falloff distance. Finally, we've decided to keep the double shot attachment as it was already implemented, and we still believe it's an interesting addition to the game. 
While on the topic of new attachments, we've decided to give the Crossvec two new magazine options to choose from. The default setup still holds 40 rounds, but it's now filled with hollow point bullets. This deals more damage, but has worse penetration power. The other magazine is filled with armor piercing bullets. The capacity is lowered by 10, but it performs much better against armored targets. These changes make the Crossvec slightly less universal, but provide more options to maximize performance in specific gameplay scenarios. While SMGs will never compete with rifles when it comes to taking down armored targets, the AP Mag provides the necessary middle ground to make gunfights more balanced. There are also a few important quality of life improvements when it comes to weapons. This includes more accessibility options, such as a new slider which controls how much the mouse sensitivity is reduced when aiming with guns. By default, the mouse sensitivity is divided by the weapon's zoom amount, which means if you're aiming through a scope with a 4x magnification, your mouse movements will result in a quarter of the angular change. This effect can be multiplied, reduced, or even removed entirely depending on the slider setting. Other than this, we're adding an option which will allow you to toggle the ADS. When enabled, instead of holding your right mouse button to aim, you can just click it once, and then click it again to return to hip fire. Grenades will also be receiving a new feature, an option to re-secure them. Before the grenade is thrown, you may press the reload key. The character will then reinsert the pin, making the grenade ready for use at another time. Similar features have been implemented for other throwable objects, such as SCP-018 or Ghostlight. These were the main features we have planned for version 11.2, but as always, we have plenty of other improvements that we will be introducing in the final revision of the update. This patch will most likely enter closed beta by the end of this month, and we're hoping for a full release within the first two weeks of April. In addition, if you're watching this devlog during its premiere, in exactly two hours, we'll be streaming on our Twitch channel. We're planning on thoroughly presenting the features we have discussed in this devlog, as well as answering any remaining questions you may have. If you're watching this later, the link to the Twitch stream recording will be in the description. Finally, we'd like to answer a few of your questions. First question from the Blackest Cat. Will the third person animation be improved as well? This may or may not be a surprise to you, but we're not happy with the current state of the third person animations either. This is something we're holding off with because the character models themselves are going to be reworked. This is a project that we've been working on for the past couple of months. As of now, we have completed our models for both the MTF and Chaos Insurgency. In time, we'll be finishing the rest of our human characters alongside new third person animations. Please note, however, it's a relatively long process to implement these animations, and that this is currently not our top priority, so we kindly ask for your patience when it comes to these changes. Another question from Floppy Cat. Damn, how many cats are there? What is one of the biggest issues you see with SCP-SL at the moment? Well, despite Secret Lab obviously being the best game out there, it still has its issues, and we believe the biggest problem we're facing right now is strongly related to level design. The facility and game objectives are simply too linear and don't provide enough unique gameplay scenarios. On top of that, it encourages camping. Fixing these issues requires significant changes to the map layout, which will happen gradually across multiple updates. Third question from Deyu. Will stats ever be introduced? Assuming this is in regards to the global stats, such as a player's number of kills, death, victories, etc., the answer is no. While we may add a more competitive game mode in the future, the base game will never include a global leaderboard. With the asymmetrical gameplay that SL provides, certain characters are more likely to die while others are more likely to kill. This means that we would need to track the stats separately for every faction. In addition, SL is a casual game. We want people to play it however they want and not have to worry about losing their position in the leaderboard. With this being said, we may consider adding personal stat tracking as a main menu feature, but we wouldn't synchronize it globally. We may also consider displaying more stats on the round summary screen, but this would be it. Next question from OJP1. Can you tell us a rough priority list of SCPs to be overhauled next? We don't really have such a list, but we can still analyze the overall situation to give you more of a rough idea. SCP-049 would probably have to wait until the character models rework because the zombies also need new models. As for SCP-106, we're happy with this current model, but the pocket dimension would be something requiring a lot of attention from our artists who already have a pretty big workload. SCP-939 and 079 are thus the most feasible options for the next SCPs to be reworked, despite admittedly not needing immediate attention. 
With that being said, it's important to note that we're talking about complete reworks. Smaller gameplay changes aren't off the table. And the fifth question from Bagel Boy. Is more merch coming soon? What other means of income is Northwood considering? As many of you know, last year we partnered with Makeship and released our first official merch, an SCP-096 plushie. We were pleased to see how many people were interested in buying one, and we'd like to thank you all for your support. We're definitely looking forward to working on similar projects in the future. As for other means of income, we don't have any solid plans right now, but we are looking into additional forms of non-intrusive game monetization. Although we've received many other questions, there is no feasible way to answer them all in this devlog. So unfortunately, we're concluding it here. If there are any other topics you're wondering about, we'd like to remind you about the upcoming Twitch stream. And if you're watching this video after its premiere, leave your comments below. See you next time.